So I went to Tom yesterday and I saw this neat looking LED nightlight which uh, seems to be from no particular brand as this and one of these absolutely terrible plastic wraps was everything that came with it. Um, yeah, not much to see here except from the technical data which is absolutely astonishing. It is switching on and off by an integrated and night sensor has white light it has a small power usage by using optimized light output and uses a long lasting led well bulb according to this shitty sheet of paper which we dispose of rather quickly and i thought well it could be interesting to take a look inside this thing so, yeah, I think at first we should power it up and see what the light performance is actually all about. For that, I probably will put out the lights. Let's have a look under studio lights at first. As we can see, it produces a rather cold white light, which is not very bright under these lights. But if we switch off the big light and the smaller lights, you can see that it is actually quite bright. In my opinion, way, way too bright. Uh, this is, well, not like a flashlight, but too bright for a nightlight. It is definitely blinding bright. I tried this uh, last night in my bedroom and uh, no, <laughs> nope, 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 this is not nice. Instead, uh, just compare this to one of my self-made LED night lights or self-converted ones, which uses a neon instead. And in my opinion, this is completely adequate to orient yourself at night without being blasted by light. Anyway, let's switch on the lights again. Be careful with your eyes. And let's take a look inside of this. To look inside, we probably have to unscrew this stupid tamper-proof screw. I I don't know if you can see, let me just focus a bit more on that, or try to focus. So you can see it's one of these slotted ones with the beveled edges to make you slip off with your screwdriver. But let's see if we can can't circumvent this by applying unnecessary force if we have to. Oh yeah, it's so totally proving the temper. I feel like it is absolutely impossible to open this one or remove this screw at all. Seriously, it's, why do they even bother with this stupid shit? So, after removing the unremovable screw, or almost unremovable, which still needs to be removed a bit more. So a bit more of excessive force is needed. We got that opened. Ooh. Let's get rid of that stupid thing. And have a look inside. At first glance, I see a typical, well, <laughs> typical shitty sheep layout. And interestingly enough, let me zoom down, down a bit. You can see, if I make this focused, you can see that this resistor actually seems to be a botch resistor as it was soldered onto remaining leads of an existing one. Interesting. Also, aside from that, we have few more resistors, a small capacitor, 
a small transistor bridge rectifier and I would assume a light sensor maybe a light depending diode or whatever that is we will see later and we can see here are some more holes that are not populated in a triangle pattern it might have been the idea to use a another transistor there who knows but yeah so far this is quite a nice PCB oh, we have a big capacitor on the bottom side which is probably in series Ah, this is the discharge resistor over that one yeah I would say that we should reverse engineer this one one moment please I have drawn out the schematic for this nightlight thing and I have to say I am very much not impressed at all so let's take a look at it using a sunken str2112 as a kind of cover so that you experience my initial feelings when I started drawing that. We start strong with a usual capacitive dropper using that big yellow capacitor underneath. It has a discharge resistor which is surprisingly small with 430 kilo ohms, also a kind of strange value but eh, we don't want to complain about that but uh, I noticed using my thermal camera that this resistor is actually getting a bit warm not hot but uh, visually warm compared to the other parts also we have two resistors in series R1 other speaking is hard today R1 and R6. R6 seems to be a flame proof fusible resistor kind of deal. It is a 100 ohm and the R1 is a 56 ohm as we can see here. The big capacitor on the other side is a 330 nanofarad capacitor. It is a X2 security capacitor so that is quite good. We follow up by the diode bridge, uh, conventionally named DB. Uh, it is a type DB107, just standard part, nothing fancy. And behind that we start with a small filter capacitor, which is a, what is the, what brand is that? It is a Jackage, Jake, Jake C. I don't know, Jackage? Let's call it Jackage. It's a Jackage 10 microfarad 15, 50 volts capacitor. For whatever reason, it is uh, described as E1 and not C2, which would make sense as that one is called C1, uh, as you maybe can see here ish, there. It's a C1, but, but that here, it is obviously, it's not a capacitor, it's a, I, I don't know, uh, US, Uapacitor, it's a Uapacitor, Jacket Uapacitor. So, after that, we have, following the traces on the back side, we have three LEDs, all in series, followed by a 1.5 kilo ohms resistor R5 which is that slightly bigger one here so far so good nothing special I also measured uh, the voltages above stuff and each LED gets roughly 3 volts at roughly four and a half five 5 milliamperes so that's quite good so far but you might notice one oddity here this thing turns on when it gets dark. So where is the transistor here? Well, the transistor is doing something very interesting uh, together with, uh, I think it is R3. It's also doing something interesting. <laughs> Let's start with R3 first. 
which is just strapped basically in parallel to the input capacitor. Probably the idea is to keep that one from exploding if one of the LEDs decides to yeah, just die for whatever reason. Um, because then the voltage on that would shoot up and would make this small jacket sitter go pop, which we want to try to avoid. It would be quite a nasty surprise if this night light would pop at night. So we have this basically wasting away power all the time, which I also measured. Um, it gave quite interesting results. I try to uh, blend them into the video in a second. So, and then we have our transistor and our light dependent unknown device. I just drew it as a, a light dependent a transistor here. I think it might be a light dependent diode, who knows, but it's something of that idea. And as you can see, this circuit is quite strange. As soon as we have darkness, this transistor starts to close. Uh, no, not to close, uh, to, to open. It stops conducting and the LEDs take over. In the meantime, when it is, uh, it's daylight, this one gets pulled to ground making this PNP transistor conductive, which results in the transistor basically shorting out the complete power supply, which seems slightly wasteful in, in my eyes. Um, what did they write again on this thing here? Uh, smallest power usage by optimized light performance or light power. I'm not quite sure about that anymore. Also, uh, they say it's 0 0.8 watts. Um, yeah, n not so much. Uh, so let's <laughs> take a look at my measurements using my LMG450. Uh, I, as I said, I try to put them on the screen right now, just talking out of memory. Um, as you can hopefully see, we have a power usage of 6 volt ampere. Um, as this is a capacitive supply, we, this is not real power, this is just apparent power. Um, so it's not built, but still we are using six watts of power for basically nothing when the thing is off and compare that to the second picture i show now this one is when the leds are on and as you can see it's also using six watts um, but at least in this part uh, the amount of real power is getting a bit higher. I think it was around 0 0.5 watts. Not quite sure right out of my head. Um, but we can see that the power that this light delivers is nowhere near the promised 0 0.8 watts. Um, it's, yeah, if we calculate it, we have like I guess it is 0 0.3 watts in light output and 0 0.3 watts in wasted power from this strange shutoff circuitry and this bleeder resistor. So very, very odd.